Hi, my name is Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to focus on iteration statements. Actually, we're going to look at a single iteration statement called the for loop. And sometimes you're going to need to loop through or iterate through a sequence of items and perform a series of checks until you find a successful match. Actually, you're going to do this a little bit more than you might anticipate. So this is a useful uh, item to have in your toolbox, even though you might not think it's so useful at first. So let's start off by creating a new project. I'm going to go on the Start page and click New Project. And I'm going to create a project called If, I'm sorry, For Iterations. Click OK. And the syntax itself is probably the most cryptic of anything that you've seen yet. Now, if I had to admit it, sometimes when I'm a little confused or tired at the end of the day, I, I get this a little mixed up myself. So later, after we've struggled through it all by writing it all by hand, I'm going to share with you the secret that I use uh, to cheat my way through writing it correctly every time. So having warned you about the complexity of this syntax, I'm still betting that once we write it, you're still going to be able to figure it out even before we run the application. So let me do this. I'm going to write the code, and then we're going to come back and delve into it a bit more. So what do you think that this code actually is going to do? Well, I'm betting that the most difficult part was this line 12 where you have several things going on all at the same time. So let's break all these statements up. First of all, let's run the application. I hit Start Debugging. And you can see I have a sequence of numbers 0 through 9. All right, so let's break up this line 12. We first of all have four with an open and close parenthesis, and so we're going to evaluate everything inside. There's actually three parts to this statement. There's this int i equals zero, then i less than 10, then i plus plus. So first of all, we're clearly creating a variable called i and setting its value, initializing its value to zero. Then next, we're going to evaluate and ask, is it true that i is less than 10. So let's come back to that in just a moment. And then finally here, there's this strange little operator that we haven't talked about. Uh, it's actually an increment operator. So it's the equivalent of writing i equals i plus 1. So whatever i is, add 1 to it. Uh, so what happens is this. We're saying take i, for example, loop through this block of code in the open and close curly braces until this condition becomes true. When it's true, then exit out of this block of code. Uh, don't perform it any longer. Uh, each time you iterate through this increment i by 1, and then try it again and again and again until we break this condition, and i equal, equals 10. It's no longer less than 10. Let's go into a slightly more advanced example. I'm going to comment out that line of code. And then I'm going to go in here and do if i is equal to 7, then console.writeLine found 7. And then we're going to type in this break statement. What did I do here? Well, I just added a simple if statement inside of our for loop. So what do you suppose it's going to do this time? Well, we're inserting the if statement to circumvent the natural flow of the code. Not only will we print the message to screen once we hit the value of 7, we'll also use the break statement to break out of our loop altogether. So the remainder, 8, 9, and so on, will not be evaluated. Okay? So in order to prove this works, or to watch it operate, what I'm going to do is set a breakpoint here on our if statement. And recall from our previous video that to set a breakpoint, all I got to do is go to this grade column to the left hand side and click it once, at which point we get a little red circle, which is like a stop sign. So now we're going to run our application. And when we do 
the stop sign turns into yellow, which means this is the next line of code that's going to be executed. So if I hover my mouse cursor over the value of i, you can see that currently it's set to the value of zero. I'm going to use this little pin off to the right hand side, and now that is pinned to that line of code. So I can begin to step through using the step over uh, icon on my toolbar, or I can use the F10 key on my keyboard to begin walking through lines of code. Notice that since i is equal to zero, this statement evaluates to false, so it skips over this block of code and immediately goes to the next block of code, which is the ending curly brace. So let's click step over again. You can see the next thing that's gonna happen is that i currently zero is going to be uh, incremented by one. So let's step over again. And you can see now in our debugging window here that i is equal to one. Notice also that i's value became red to indicate that something just changed on the last code, line of code that was executed. Furthermore, if you look at this locals window down here, you can see one is in red as well. If we go to the next line of code, you can see, first of all, it's gonna be evaluated now. It, now that we've incremented it, will I be less than 10 still? And it is. Also, everything goes back to black, which means nothing changed on the previous line of code that was executed. So let's just keep walking through this and we can just stop when we get to seven. So I'm just gonna start clicking fast. All right, so here we've come to seven. I'm gonna click one more time and now we can see that we have gone into this block of code because we have successfully met that condition. We write to the console window and now notice what happens when we hit this break statement. We jump from break outside of our four code block into the last line of code that we've written, console.writeLine. So at this point, I'm just gonna select the continue button so that I can see the console window. And indeed, we have our statement printed here and we can move on. Now, admittedly, this is kind of a nonsensical uh, uh, snippet of code. It doesn't really do a whole lot for us. Uh, we know we're going to hit seven eventually, and it's kind of pointless to run through it. This is just a pithy example in order to demonstrate the utility of the for statement and how it all works and how we're able to break out of a for loop if we need to by satisfying some condition. Okay, so before I close this out, let me show you how I can memorize this syntax without having to write it all out by hand. And so the neat thing in Visual Studio is there's this notion of code snippets, and we're gonna come back to this a number of times. It's gonna save us a lot of keystrokes. I'm gonna type in the, just the word for, F-O-R, and then I'm gonna hit tab on my keyboard twice. And the second time, after the second tab, notice that it will create for me a sample code snippet of a, uh, of a for statement. So here we have int i equals zero, i less than length, i plus one. Now the idea here is that we use the tab key to tab between these two variables. There's a variable int i, we could change this to my x or something like that. And when I hit the tab key on the keyboard, notice that it changed all instances of i to my x. All right, and then here I can either type in an, a literal number like 10, or I can change it to some other variable that holds some value. Maybe in, in, we could go even Y or I here. That might be an interesting little experiment. But let's go ahead and just use the number 10. And we could, again, go, go through the same example and do my X. So we should get a sequence of numbers printing out zero to nine, just like we did previously, okay? All right, so let's just recap what we talked about in this lesson. We looked at how to use the for statement to iterate through a block of code a number of times until a particular set of criteria were satisfied. We demonstrated a simple condition in our code examples, but we can expand on this and we will in future lessons. We also looked at how to combine an if statement inside of a for iteration and add some logic to evaluate certain conditions. We looked at how to use a break statement to jump out of code uh, for, uh, sorry, the code block of the for iteration. We 
looked at a practical example of how to use some of the debugging features within Visual Studio, and then I showed you this magic little code snippet uh, functionality inside of the IDE. Okay, so let's pick it up in the next video. See you then. Thank you.